right, I want to uh, go back over a little bit of something yesterday I, I missed in the previous uh, video. didn't really miss it, I guess. It, it was on screen, but I didn't talk about it. Uh, and it was in the, um, I think, the receiving. Talk a little bit about it real quick, uh, and then we'll move on. So if I do a find here on factory. So... Uh, what this line was, if you saw it yesterday, and this is task.factory, and we're talking about uh, moving things that can be done uh, somewhere else, m much like um, asynchronous uh, function, just go ahead and do this. Um, but w what's happening in the receiving, so you have the thread that checks and sees if data is ready. If data is ready, then you go ahead and you uh, uh, parse that out to do some to do some work and then continue looking to see if data is ready. So that's what this thread is doing is basically uh, making it where it's more threading uh, being done because you're saying, well, if I have this work now, I finally can, I have this data that I can do something with. Well, you know what, go ahead and give it to this person. They can go, they can go fiddle with that while I go ahead and continue uh, looking to see if there's some more data ready. So uh, I think that that's a, a much better way of checking to see if data is com incoming because especially if you're the if you've got a bunch of players uh, connected to the host or uh, the host has to give a bunch of information real quick it's more of basically I think the host getting that information and the host is going to get hits from the from all kinds of clients and uh, it, as long as you check that data is there real quick as, as soon as possible and then parse out the, the par spots that need to do their own work uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get ahead of one another. So as soon as I get the data, if I say go ahead and do it, it most likely when I get the data again, I want to check to see if there's more data, if there is right then and there, and I say, you know what, go do this too. It's really hard, I would probably say near impossible for uh, it to get out of order for that reason. Um, it'd be out of order in different reasons. It, it, data would be like lost. Uh, and had to re re go out, re come back to you, but um, so that's what this uh, is, and that that bringing that up uh, with more threading in mind, uh, we need to think about that at all times, really. Um, another thing that's interesting to to talk about is that you could open up multiple connections, multiple ports, and uh, so from my understanding, there's. I don't know what your limit is really on sending, um, I want to say packets, but it's it, it, there's an insane amount of packets you can send and receive basically within a frame. Let's we'll say a frame of an update that you could receive way more than one. Uh, so uh, that's all possible. And uh, it's a good thing to think about and know because at some point you may be like, well, how can I, how can I further uh, program something that's very difficult and requires a lot of data and whatnot and I think this is called uh, parallel it, it's basically like parallel programming but um, I, I'm I for UDP I can't remember exactly what I think that it does start with the word parallel though there's some kind of parallel uh, port programming or something uh, I can't remember it was something I, I read about a little bit, but I didn't really travel into because I, I think that you don't want to go down that road if you don't have to. You just want to uh, stay away from things that uh, overcomplicate and make things uh, not work as well until you're forced to. You know, that's just something. So right now I'm not doing any of that, but at some point it may happen. There may be something to do with that. Uh, so going on to ping and pong and let's uh, Indian... Uh, checked. We're going to try to talk at least about those two. Five has kind of been covered about me saying uh, the packet is the buffer. There's so we have a buffer fill with the send and receive the send, excuse me. And I can kind of show that right now, just to just to cover it. Uh, let's go to Claire's. Let's see what am I looking up? I'm looking up. Sorry, sometimes I have short-term memory, uh, especially if I don't feel good. Uh, we we're looking up the buffer. So uh, buffer is, should be right here. This is the uh, index, I think. And that means the actual array is here. 
So, and then we have max packet size. So with the array itself, um, that I think uh, I use 1,024 and Steam is 1,200. So you could max this out if you're using Steam going to 1,200. I don't know what you could max it out if not using Steam. Um, but I would try to keep it the same, wherever you, whatever you're going to do. Personally, I would probably try to do less than 1,200. I'd probably do 1,024, I think, is recommended in some places where you read about it. Um, so I would probably try to stay there if possible. You know, just it just seems to make sense. If if you start programming for some other uh, network or something, and then theirs is 1,024, it, at least if you consider the ability to change it. Mine, I have the ability to change it, but you also want to consider when I say... Uh, the size is trying to pack it as tight as possible. Um, so uh, a good example of this is the personal byte header I have is three bytes. And then other examples are don't send big integers, 32 bit, if you don't need to. Those are four bytes. Uh, try to send uh, at least signed or unsigned um, U shorts uh, because those are 16 um, bit. And then that comes down to two bytes. So uh, stuff that, that really does well for this, let's, let's say you want to start sending indexes. Uh, you think about your indexes. Am I going to have 256 indexes? That's one byte. If I'm going to do that, then I'll go ahead and do one byte. Uh, that's it. So in the game, you might think, well, I'm only going to have 64 players. Then if you ever want to send a player index, only send a byte. If you have to send more than that, let's say it's more than 256, uh, you would want to then send uh, um, a short. So uh, if you hear me saying you short or short, unsigned, um, these are things you can look up, of course. So unsigned uh, and then signed, but basically sending just a short. Um, it, you just got to think about the limit because it, it, what really matters is the amount of bytes that you send is that you have to be worried about. So my projectiles and, and uh, things that are like that send a short. Um, I think I send U short for terrain, and then uh, I might send U short for everything right now. But um, you can swip swap whatever, whichever way you really want to. I think I do U short because of the zero, but I don't, I don't really remember. Um, so we'll keep moving on here because I could talk all day about certain things, and then we don't really get to what I need to go over before we can go to some really other cool stuff. There's some other cool stuff I can really show, but I want to go over the main kind of things to understand. So uh, let's go to ping pong here. And that's at the very bottom here. So uh, the way a ping works, and I kind of explained this a little bit, is that you send out some data and uh, you wait for a reply. Now, as you send out the data, you start the timer because it, usually a ping pong means round trip. Uh, so I start the timer right when I send out a ping and then when the pong comes back, the reply, I stop the timer and then I do some uh, check to see what that time evaluates as to give me a ping. Now, I don't know if this is considered the best way, but I, I believe this is the way I would do it. Uh, in some cases, and I'm sure it's in other games that it is done this way, but uh, talking about how to do the time in, in right here, kind of want to explain. So um, there's a thing with slow motion, and uh, if, you, if you had slow motion enabled and you want to do actual time, you would do something like this so that uh, it would definitely guarantee if you had slow motion in your game, especially the multiplayer, you would be saying, hey, uh, I need you to count real time and not with the, the time scale going on. Uh, so that's why this, this line uh, exists. You could technically take this out, but I put this here to kind of remind me that I do a lot of slow motion stuff with games. I think it's freaking awesome. And eventually I'll do some kind of multiplayer with slow motion. And I, I'm very good at understanding how that stuff works uh, for the most part. So it's, it's possible for me to go ahead and do that in the future. Um, for multiplayer. So what I'm going to do is I leave this here knowing that it at some point I won't have to add or, or deal with any bugs or anything because I know that that code's already been uh, uh, written down. So uh, moving on to we see the text here uh, and then we have so we were times by a thousand which gives you the milliseconds to come a second. Uh, there's a thousand milliseconds in a second and then it looks like two string 
And then it looks like uh, milliseconds is added on to that. Uh, what you see here on this end is constants, and people don't have to necessarily do constants, although I kind of just recommend it because it's kind of just a thing that you should do anyways. Um, it's not always something that you are forced to do. Um, it, it's not going to be like, oh, 1,000% faster efficiency, anything like that, no. But um, it's nice to have all your constants in one place. And it, it kind of considered as if you're hard coding and stuff, you, you have those numbers that you can go look at. So I can uh, peek at this and then go look at my constants and uh, understand that. So uh, let's close this, let's close that. This right here, yep, okay. I was making sure that this is just a simple uh, true. Because when you see two trues like this and you see an if, usually you can just make it a one line. But now I look at it, there's two different objects here. Or two different classes, I should say. So um, at some point, when I expand this game to be more than two players, uh, which will probably happen very soon, uh, within the next month, I, I think, or less than that, uh, there'll be more code in this section. Obviously, there'll be more code everywhere, but uh, I've been trying to perfect everything as possible with two players first, because as soon as you get it smooth and very well played out with two players, then you start incorporating the other players, and you have a lot less problems. You don't have those bugs and what to deal with, because I've been dealing with them and knowing what to do and, and focusing on keeping it smooth. So you build your, your project, especially something this complex, this huge, and just gets... Uh, extremely overwhelming with uh, the amount of code that you could be writing, the, the stuff that you could be doing. You want to build from the bottom up, uh, kind of like you're building a pyramid. And as you run across problems, take care of them right away. That's what I would, I would suggest. You may think that, okay, well, this is going to take me two or five years. The more experience you have, um, and eventually I'll be, I'll be working on uh, uh, some bugs uh, very soon that I know of, um, I don't really have a problem with bugs. So if you see me playing the game or someone playing the game, if I post on the, any videos online and stuff, you'll be going, well, the game looks really smooth, looks really playable. Where's the bugs at? It's because I take consideration right into them. I, I think it makes you a better programmer when you understand uh, bugs in general because then you come across of not writing that code ever again, really. It's pretty rare um, once you understand, okay, uh, that bug existed because of this, so I won't I won't ever write code like that if if possible. You, I think you kind of keep in your head because they're negative, really. Bugs are kind of negative, um, and I, I think overall it makes you a better, much better programmer. It's the same as like learning efficiency. I shouldn't I shouldn't talk so much about that stuff because we're getting off topic, but uh, I, I think those things make you a much better programmer because you have to usually write. Uh, less, and let's say in time frame. So you may write more code with efficiency, but you may sit down a lot less over the entire project. So like I said, this might take five years for somebody to complete. It might take me two years because of the experience. Uh, it just depends. So uh, moving on. <clears throat> these are different. Now these are the same here kind of thing. So this could be functioned out and then you're stacking that. But uh, I guess that's okay for right now because th these things will change. Another thing is if you know the code is going to change and you decide to refactor it right now, mm, you're going to change it. You just waste time refactoring. So I don't know. Um, but I usually refactor on the fly. So if you look at most of this code, you'll notice that it, it looks uh, refactored, redone, and all uh, stuff is um, factored out in a way that the functions – all things that are similar, patterns and whatnot. This is a pattern here that uh, is factored. So um, restart the timer. So this is uh, at a time of update. Now this, uh, basically what I'm doing is during the update, I add time. And then at some point, I check the timer. Uh, for me, this looks like this checks every time, amount of time I want to. So I don't remember if this is a, a second or not. This might be half a second or something, depending on what I set it to. But basically what I'm saying is you don't want to uh, sometimes keep updating the text right away. Uh, there's no point. You want to basically uh, calculate and show that I think the ping every about a second, uh, roughly, or at least less than a second. 
because um, if you say a second, sometimes it doesn't run on exactly a second, right? You may decide to do a little less or something um, so that it's updating uh, pretty much. It, it, whether whether or not it doesn't matter really what, what time frame you if you put if you put a second if you think about it because it, it doesn't always exactly execute at a second to show <laughs> but uh, anyways my my point being is that you don't need to update it every frame you don't need to put this text equals because you won't get the ping back uh, that that you don't need to I think show it that many times like just see it going gee you know imagine the the it's saying 0 016 0 016 like so fast you can't even read it so uh, I think it, it makes a good sense to really just update it every uh, second at least and not uh, more than that. Um, uh, let's see here. So there is a boolean here. And then you sit, so we send out the ping, it looks like after every second. Um, or this is the amount of time that I want to send out pings. This might be the amount of times amount of time before I sound another ping I'm thinking uh, so basically I'm just going to explain the concept uh, because the the code I have here sometimes I can't remember why it exists but there's good reason it exists and uh, I guess I could check over these these things but I don't really I don't think I'll really remember and it'll take longer and longer to oops to remember uh, what I was doing so let's see here so see so yeah, now i'm already following and going through static float time before updating latency so then i have to do references on this uh no you don't do references on that that's changing over time okay you do references on this There we go. So one second, like I was kind of explaining. Uh, going back over here. Um, so basically, you want to you want to send out your ping, but I think you don't want to send it out. Maybe since 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 it doesn't make sense. I think you want to send it out waiting for the pong, if I remember correctly. So you send it out. Uh, it just basically the message. So mine right here example is. Uh, and this, if I if I push comma here, so this is filling the buffer. So what this means is that I go ahead and I prepare to send a ping, but I package it with everything else. It's packaged with the the world stuff, the projectiles, the transformation stuff, all that information. So it's packaged together. It's not sent immediately. Uh, it's all it's all in one packet, and then it gets uh, read on the other side. So. I send it, it looks like I wait for about a second, then I send uh, some more. And um, the the thing about this is that it looks like the Pong back is checked when I actually get something. And I think this is maybe, uh, possibly, do I see a mode here? No, I don't see any state or anything like that. Um, I, what I was trying to do is check and see if there was a mode or something like you wait till you actually get it. But then you have to think about UDP. So a, a thing that is interesting, if you could always put it in your head or down on notes or something, just imagine UDP is always, you didn't get the data. So when you're writing anything, when you're writing this ping and pong thing, uh, you didn't get the data. Think of that every single time. So what my code does if you didn't get the data is it displays a thousand ping, for example, uh, because of that one second, I guess, if I remember correctly. but. It just says, well, your ping is at least a thousand. Really shitty. Um, you could put like a question mark or something. I don't know what it is. I never got it, but you have to you have to think of it like that. Um, so I think uh, uh, with with also what the code does uh, because of um, it's constantly coming in and because of sequences that if it doesn't come in within a certain amount of time, it's tossed out. So because I never received it my code will automatically say, okay, it's a thousand. Sorry, it's really freaking high. Uh, so <clears throat> I don't think it really matters what you show as long as you don't show a small number because it's it's not, you could put a, uh, a wacky face like, uh, I got I messed up. There's something wrong in the calculation because I didn't get anything. You know, you could, you could do whatever you want, but 
Um, I just think you, you have to, for a small ping, that you want to show that number. So when you connect with somebody, zero, most likely zero to 16 and zero to 33, uh, about roughly. I want to say those are the only numbers I see in a loopback. Uh, I don't know if I would see those numbers across the computer, even through um, some fast switch or anything uh, networked, or even if you did cable to cable, uh, what is that, crossover? Let's say crossover from computer to computer. I still don't think it might necessarily stay at the 0 to 33. Uh, maybe, maybe it's possible, but uh, in most cases when I've played online with somebody, I've seen it go uh, 50 to uh, 300 something. It depends on how far away the person is. Maybe Germany, I think it was up to 250 something to 300. Um, but uh, point point being about this ping pong stuff is that uh, <clears throat> you just display for your own knowledge and for the person's playing's knowledge, so they can tell. Oh, I'm playing in the server. I've got 50 ping. This is nice. Oh, I'm playing the server. I've got 300 ping. Oh, this is why I'm I'm not doing so well. I'm not playing or having as much fun. I need to go find another server. Uh, also, to to do with this is that you may want to ping a server, see what that that speed is. Uh, before actually joining it. So uh, it's nice to have this. I don't know why this isn't in every freaking game. Um, some of them I think do it but don't do it well enough. Don't do a very good job of it. <coughs> so that's why I would include this if you're making something like this. I, I think it's absolutely necessary. Uh, is there anything else we need to talk about here? I don't think so. So we're going to close that up and Indian checked okay so this is not very difficult uh, but you will get confused and confusing because you'll try to basically I think I from my understanding my code should work for that uh, from the tests that I've done it and understand so um, I can't confirm in every uh, situation of it, it'll work every single time but I can uh, confirm that it should be working uh, so we'll go look at that, and that will be in the converting, I guess. So use bit converter, obviously. I mean, we should talk about this too when converting certain things. It doesn't really say that in here. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but the uh, when you're sending those bytes and stuff, please use at least bit converter uh, because you want to keep the bytes low. And it's faster than most other ways that I read about. Excuse me. Um, so what I do is I do this check for Indian. And what that is is that there's big, there's little, and there's, I guess, in between and some mixed and whatnot. But for this case, is you want to think about it as uh, if you're storing bytes. So um, I'm not a master in this area at, by any means because I haven't spent so much time on it. But I will explain that I do know a little bit enough to, to, to talk about it is that let's say you want to send two bytes and your bytes are 0 and 2. Okay, um, that's, a, that's a short, let's say. So you send 0 and 2. And then uh, what, what ends up happening is that on the other end, because of the architecture of that computer, it reads it as 2, 0. And now you've got a problem. So what we're talking about is that not all computers, or let's say, yeah, let's just say computers, are not going to read the bytes the same. And that really sucks to have to say that, but it, the reason this, I guess, was created was for performance. And now it's not as really considered, and uh, I, I don't know if it's used as much anymore. But um, basically, I, I think what mine does here is it checks for big, is little Indian. Uh, I guess you could just say, if there is big, no, there's not. So, um, so that basically you're checking it like that. If there is big, reverse it, and you just call this every time you have something that uh, is uh, more than a byte. So, if you're going to send a boolean and you send it as a byte, you don't need to do this. Uh, you just send that um, that byte, and we can kind of look at some uh, some data here. Let's see convert. So here we have the tank health is being set with this convert to bytes, which does this Indian. And uh, 
going over here. So we see that being done for these for the tank health being done for this because these are basically byte arrays. So at, at, like I said, they're more than one byte, then you need to do it. If it's one byte, only one byte, you don't need to do it. So here it is right here. So is engine on, don't need to do it. You can see I just convert it to byte right there. So uh, going back over here, so when you receive the data, you need to do the same thing. Uh, because that way, you if it needs to be reversed, you reverse it. So before you send it, you reverse it if you need to. So you see here, it will choose if it needs to reverse or not. Just call this. Um, you can easily see that it's called in here. When doing bytes to integer, bytes to short, bytes to short, stuff like that, uh, we can see it's in there. Now, go, let's see. I think I want to show in a receive receive part. So let's go to things in sequencing. So well, we can just look at a structure. This goes to this structure. Uh, peek at this definition here, please. And then it goes to this. So this, we'll go to this definition. So this is taking some data and making a vector three out of it. And we can see here it calls to float. And if we go check when it makes it back into it makes it back into a single, so, so a float. Um, right here we are uh, checking again. So this is during the receive. So we have the send. We do it, and at a time that we receive. So this is one of the receives here, which is in that function. So receiving. So. Uh, then you shouldn't have a problem. Should be good to go. Uh, this doesn't seem that complicated. It just it feels like it gets complicated when you don't really understand. And you have to have uh, a, a computer that has this issue from one another and host the game and, and make sure it's working or not. So you kind of have to basically take uh, your code and remove, almost just return this out, I guess. Uh, what was that at? Right here. So you return this out so you purposely don't have any uh, reversing. And that way that you can see if, if it's if it, you get an error first. Okay, now I know these, these two computers are going to have a problem. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and put the, this code, turn it back on and see if it fixes it. And if it does, then you know, you're good. That's how you know. Um, I don't think I have uh, any that I can check other than asking my friends. That's the only way I can check something like this. Uh, simply because I have too many computers that are, are really the same. So, um, <clears throat> I think that's I, I think that's pretty well explained. Is that you do have to reverse at some point in time, uh, and you, you have to consider as a programmer that you should program for the necessary. This is really kind of the necessary. If I want to make this game pop on Steam and want other people to play this and whatnot, I think it's absolutely necessary. At some point, somebody may, may ask for their money back saying, hey, for some reason, I cannot play with these other people. I don't understand why. And so I think it's something you just have to take up and program in. And other people might say, you know what? This is a hobby for me. I'm making this game. I don't need to do this. And it, it personally, if you have that kind of attitude, and I'm not saying it in a bad way, because that's just, the, you think it's too much for you. Yeah, sure, some things could be too much for some people. But the, what I mean by that attitude for this is that um, it, it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter, for because you're doing it for a hobby. If you're just going to make it, but what I'm state, I should be stating more of is that if you're watching this vi these video series that I'm making about this information and you're going to do some of this, this is hardcore stuff in the first place. So if you're going to skimp on something, this, this this is not too much difficult. I mean, you can just look at my code here and basically copy that. Uh, but if you uh, don't do even that part, that's just a very, seems to be a very simple part now, because I'm kind of showing it and explaining it. Uh, why even try doing the rest? Because the rest is far more complex and far more code and everything uh, to go over uh, and do. So you, it, it, to me, it, it makes sense that you might as well just go put this in there. I think what it comes down to is people have a hard time uh, grasping 
what to do because there's not enough out there to really show you, okay, this is exactly what you do. I, I had to get help from uh, some friends basically going over this this part because it was very confusing to me at first. I, I, I would totally admit right away that I'm, for someone like me, um, sometimes I have problems with understanding and uh, something simple. But when you actually realize you need to go over this, you need to do this, and you need to put it in, and it's nothing compared to the rest of the stuff, just do it. Just do it. So that's kind of what I'm saying if you're just going to say, you know what, I'm doing this as a hobby. I don't need to add that in there. Um, just do it. <laughs> There's nothing really to complain about there. It's gonna You're going to be complaining about much more other stuff that is just way out. This The circular byte buffer will be way worse than this. Like, I, I don't know, hundreds of times more difficult. Uh, okay, so... We've kind of talked about that. We talked about package packaging, uh, three personal biter header per event. Uh, we've we've co we've covered that. Um, basically, started with the data send. Uh, so we have one, then the data send, then the uh, sequence. I guess next would be array sequences, smooth data grab and keep. Uh, yeah. So I think we'll cut it here for this time being. Um, if you have any more questions about this and whatnot, please send me that, that just comment a question, hit me up on Discord, something. I mean, it just makes more sense. I'll try to be more accurate. I'm not going to be completely accurate with everything because I'm not the mastermind of all this stuff. I, I'm doing pretty good at it, though. Um, but I'm definitely not like a 10-year vet veteran on multiplayer networking and whatnot. But I probably will head that way at some point. Uh, so... All right, thank you for your time. Have a nice day.